Well, we're definitely in unprecedented times um, because of the housing market and really the, the, the gangbuster bull market we had, you know, a really good market a few years ago. 2005 actually was the pinnacle of the housing market where um, all of the homes essentially reached their peak in value and started the decline. And since then, we've been, we've been in a real um, housing crisis because you've had a lot of mortgages defaulting, um, really not through the de default of the homeowners, um, but basically because a lot of loans were underwritten without any guidelines and, um, you know, or essentially, um, you know, no income, no asset guidelines. And a lot of loans were, were essentially written to, to explode, adjustable rates hybrid arms, negative amortization loans. So essentially where we sit today is there are almost a million homes in sh what we call shadow inventory. Shadow inventory means it is being held back. Typically, typically it would have been a foreclosure if, if um, these lenders had followed the, the normal guidelines, which means after 90 days of not paying your mortgage, you get foreclosed on. Well, that's not happening nowadays because there's so many homeowners who are in arrearage and who are in default of their mortgages, but these mortgage companies simply are not foreclosing because if they did foreclose on every loan that was in default, they would just pulverize the market. What would happen is they'd dump so many homes on the market that it would crash all real estate values. So what they're doing, and if they did that, it would only shoot themselves in the foot. So what they're doing instead is they're holding inventory back. It's called shadow inventory. And I use the word inventory because, um, you know, this is an economic game. The more you have of something out there, the less valuable it becomes. It's supply and demand. It's a simple law of, of economics. So by holding back these homes and not foreclosing on them and keeping them in shadow inventory, the banks are are managing their, their asset books a little bit easier. But, long story short, these homes will be coming to the market. They're, they're going to have to dump them eventually. And, um, you know, what we're seeing now is kind of a movement away from what's called bank-owned properties to a new movement, which is a, a short sale movement. What I'm saying is, you're going to see less and less bank-owned properties come to the market, and you're going to see more and more short sales. Um, it's my humble opinion that going after short sales as a buyer, although you will need to have patience and you will need to have the right expectations up front, um, going after short sales are going to give you an opportunity to get the best bang for your buck. Because these properties are, are still lived in, they're not abandoned, um, a lot of times structurally, um, they're, they're in decent condition, and if you work with the right broker, short sale broker, um, on the listing side and the buy side, you can really walk into some equity. Um, having said that, bank-owned properties still offer a great opportunity for um, prospective investors, especially if you're not afraid to, to use a hammer or a wrench and whatnot and do a little of your own um, you know, handiwork to, to rehab the property. Um, so that being said, the buzzword for today is shadow inventory. There are a lot more homes coming to the market, and um, they will come in a controlled manner. So they're not all going to crash at once. They're not, they're not all going to be dumped on the U.S. market all at once. It'll be in a slow, methodical manner, but um, you, know, you need to know how to look out for them. So if you have any other questions, feel free to contact me any day of the week. I eat, sleep, and breathe this stuff. So uh, that's what I do for a living. So um, I'd love to talk to anybody about it. Give me your own opinion. Feel free. Thanks.